perfect cloudless day, you would get, and that would probably be not in depth of wind, but more like in spring, uh, you should get 1.36 kilowatts out of a 100% efficient solar cell. So it's a whole lot of energy from the sun. Okay, uh, so we'll... Sunspots. We'll see those before too long. There's still sunspots occurring, but they're pretty small. Uh, uh, this is what the more energetic periods look like with these large sunspots that you can actually see with the naked eye. Um, but what they are is regions of very strong magnetic fields. And they're actually cooler than the rest of the surface of the sun. But the only thing important to remember is that they are magnetic, and they're very, very strong. Uh, sunspot numbers, they've been measured for hundreds of years. It's a really kind of an archaic method, but they retain that method because there are there's hundreds, there's hundreds of years of data recorded. So they continue to use that method so that the data we record now is uh, traceable back to the data that was collected ever since the early 1800s. And they've actually gone back and corrected some of the data in the 1800s to use it more consistently the way they should have done if they had computers back in 1830. Um, I won't go through the details, but this is how that's done. If anybody wants to do that, you can see it on the internet or uh, by looking at these slides. The lowest possible sunspot number is zero. That's when there are no visible spots on the sun. Um, and higher sunspot sun, uh, numbers tend to be much more solar activity of all kinds, not just sunspots. And the highest sunspot number <coughs> during the period that we've been recording it for several hundred years occurred in 1957. That's kind of a legendary year. If anybody talks to old time hands like me, 1957 is a year. But I remind people, what would you rather have? 1957, sunspot number of 190, and maybe a DX35 transmitter and an <laughs> SX100 receiver. <laughs> or would you rather have today, with an Elecraft K3 or a Yaesu FTDX5000 or your favorite radio, uh, I think we're better off now. <coughs> Uh, rather than going back to that SX100 receiver. Uh, I prepared this presentation about three months ago, and we were going down this slope, and steadily going down, and about 2020 is when we expect the actual minimum to occur. And uh, we're, we're heading that way pretty fast. Um, this is one way to record sunspot numbers, or, or actual individual sunspots. And notice what they've, what they've done here is they've plotted the latitude of the sunspot versus time. And, and this answers one of the questions about how do you know it's a new sunspot. This is the beginning of the sunspot cycle, when sunspots tend to occur at high latitudes, both north and south. And as the sunspot cycle matures, the sunspots become closer and closer and closer to the solar equator. So this is the beginning of a cycle, this is the end. And if you look here at the end of this cycle, notice there are new sunspots from the next cycle occurring at high latitudes, while the old sunspots from the last cycle are fading away at low latitudes. So this is just a plot of individual sunspots over 130 years, and it follows this cycle. And there's 1957 right there, see how much? These are strong, there are more sunspots and they're at higher latitudes. Um, and this is only over a four year period of the uh, previous sunspot cycle. This was kind of the peak of activity and there were all these sunspots in the summer of 2000. And only four years later, the only sunspots were at very low latitudes and there were just a couple of them. That's kind of where we are now. Just a few sunspots and there are very low latitudes kind of down here. So let's look back over 400 years. People have probably heard this term called wander minimum. It's kind of the oh no, the end of HF propagation. <laughs> well, the good news is, I don't think any, and you'll see this in a slide coming up, I don't think any of the solar scientists today think this is going to happen in our lifetime, thankfully. But you'll see another trend. A couple of other things. 
those of us who have been licensed for the last uh, anywhere from 10 to 50 years have been lucky to live through this period that's often called the modern maximum. It started in 1947 and ran through about 2002 when the sunspot cycles were unusually strong. And you can see in this chart how unusually strong these are compared to the early 1900s when radio was just getting going. And the last deep minimum occurred, HF radio was discovered in about 1921. So the last minimum, which we're about to enter, occurred before long distance HF radio <coughs> existed. How did they know that that occurred that far back if we weren't? Well, uh, scientists have been, count, have been counting sunspots for many, many years. I always found it interesting that the first scientists that started count, counting sunspots were in London. Has anybody have been to London? You ever see the sky? Well, it's probably the only place you can do it and not go blind. Or back then. Why did he do it back then? Oh, uh, I think just curiosity about them. People, people, I think scientists just started noticing these things on the sun wanted to know about it, they, and they figured out ways to go back and look at yeah, trees yeah. and other things, even back before 1600. It was about the same time. Yeah, the telescope was about the same time. Yep. And the telescope was invented primarily so they could get a more accurate way to determine time. Okay, so there was a lot of money involved and getting very accurate time back in the 17th century. Because if you knew very accurate time when you were on the high seas, you could avoid hitting land. Because you could use maps. And if you didn't know the time, you couldn't figure out your longitude, and you'd get into a shipwreck. So there was big money in trying to develop very accurate ways to determine time. And it turned out telescopes were, that's another story, telescopes were key to that. OK, anybody see a trend here? Yeah. <laughs> you might notice a trend. So here we are, right here. Down. Here we are here. So this is the sunspot cycle we just went through. This is the one up before. This is a pretty strong one in 1990. And this is the next one. Where should I put my finger? Through lower. Down here? A little higher. Well, most of the scientists think it's going to be about like the last one. Up, up around here, up around 100. So still pretty weak, but not the one of minimum. But it nobody down? knows for sure. Is it going down because the sun's burning out? <laughs> uh, nobody knows what's actually happening. Uh, scientists are trying to figure out uh, the detailed workings of the sun. But I mean, you think about it, the sun is billions of years old. We've been observing it for a couple hundred years. We've only had real good instruments for about 10 years. So that's not much of an observation period on a, let's say, an 8 billion year old star. So what they actually do, kind of interesting, is they're starting to start studying other stars. Because it turns out that our star is not the only star that has sunspots. Lots of other stars have sunspots too. And they're at different periods in their age. So they're looking at other stars to figure out what might happen to our sun and what happens over time. So anyway, yeah, probably probably minimum in maybe three years and back up here to about where we were in about maybe 2025. So we get to enjoy 160 meters for a while. Uh, so this goes back and looks at the last two cycles. And of interest here is this last cycle had two peaks. Very common, by the way. Very common for cycles that have two peaks. Because what actually happens is the northern hemisphere of the sun, uh, sunspots don't occur on exactly the same schedule as the sunspots on the bottom half of the sun. So what's actually happening here is the northern hemisphere of the sun had its peak here. And then, about 14 months later, the southern hemisphere of the sun had its peak and it was stronger. And there was a pretty disappointing quiet period in between where we were worried, oh my God, we started, have we started down this ramp already? And then 
all had hell started breaking off on the sun, and we enjoyed it for a couple of years. Out of curiosity, can you comment about the mini ice age? Some people say that it may be linked to this. It might be, but that's not the topic of this presentation. If I go off on that hit, we might not come back. <laughs> but do you think we'll have a mini ice age? I don't know. I don't know. So look that up on the internet. You'll get lots of interesting opinions, most of which are probably wrong. <laughs> <laughs>